Hi guys, this week we are starting uh, lipids uh, or fats. Uh, the lipid chapter is chapter 15. So it's kind of funny, we're, we're in week 16 of the course, but we're focusing on chapter 15 this week. So chapter 15 is all about lipids, fats, triglycerides, saturated versus unsaturated fat, uh, fatty acids, things like that. So let's just get started, okay? Chapter 15, lipids. Uh, lipids are water insoluble biological compounds. Today we're gonna focus on something called fatty acids, number one. Um, but it says here, we're gonna focus primarily in this entire chapter on the following types of lipids. Fatty acids, waxes or wax esters and triglycerides. So number one we'll do today, fatty acids, and number two, waxes or wax esters and triglycerides, we will do in the next video, video number two. So for today, fatty acids. Fatty acids are water insoluble carboxylic acids that contain between 12 and 20 carbons. Okay, they, they can contain more. Um, so fatty acids have what's known as a carboxylic acid head and then a kind of hydrocarbon tail. And I'm going to draw you a sketch of that right now. So just to reiterate, fatty acids are water insoluble carboxylic acids that contain between 12 and 20 carbons and they contain two parts. Now on the, I like to draw the head on the right hand side so you can see my carboxylic acid group. That would be my head or my polar uh, area of the fatty acid and then almost all of the rest of it is the tail those are just a bunch of methylene groups a bunch of ch2s okay now this particular example happens to be a 14 carbon saturated myristic acid all right so page two of our notes here uh, we're still examining fatty acids we're going to do that for this entire video there are three types of fatty acids all right there are saturated fatty acids and saturated fatty acids contain no carbon carbon double bonds or triple bonds but no carbon carbon double bonds all right they have only single bonds joining the carbon carbon hydrocarbon chain so that big long tail is nothing but carbon carbon single bonds and then a whole bunch of h's all around the carbon carbon bonds so saturated fatty acids have only single bonds joining the carbon atoms in the hydrocarbon tail, all right? Now, we can have one double bond in that tail, and it's called a monounsaturated fatty acid. So monounsaturated fatty acids, just as the uh, prefix insinuates, mono, they have just one carbon-carbon double bond in the tail. Now, for us, that carbon-carbon double bond would be off of C9, so as an example, here's oleic acid, all right? It's saturated fatty acid counterpart would be called stearic acid. Stearic acid is 18 carbons with no double bonds. Oleic acid is 18 carbons with a double bond at C9. And you can see all these guys in table 15.1 in your textbook on page 512, by the way. So I'm drawing it backwards, okay? So if you start your count from the carboxylic acid carbon, remember that's the major functional group here on that end is where we would start our counting. Well, then we do see that we have a trans, I'm sorry, a cis double bond off of C9. So a carbon-carbon a double bond on C9 is really in between carbons nine and 10. Okay, please pay, uh, pay attention to that. Now the double bonds that we're gonna focus on will always be cis, in our chapter 15, they can be trans. So carbon-carbon double bonds are usually cis, which means that a kink in the chain of carbons occurs. Now, this kink is much easier to see if you just go ahead and focus on your textbooks picture, which is uh, page 513, figure 15.2. So page 513. What you'll see is that when there's a kink in that hydrocarbon chain, it's not just a nice simple zigzag anymore, but instead you get a kink where it kinks the chain off to the right, off to the left, to the front, or to the back. 
okay? It's much easier to pack saturated fatty acids right next to each other. And what I'm trying to say here at the top of page three of today's notes is that this kink, that this kink that occurs from a C double bond C cis monounsaturated fatty acid or a polyunsaturated fatty acid, this greatly affects the melting point of the fatty acid. Now remember something, if I'm trying to melt a fatty acid, I'm trying to take a solid and disengage individual uh, fatty acid molecules further away from each other so that I can melt, all right? I'm trying to um, break or diminish these intermolecular forces, these dispersion forces, all right? Now, we didn't talk too much about this previously in the uh, general chemistry part of the course, but basically, if I have a double bond, it's going to lower my melting point. Why? Having a double bond creates a kink in the hydrocarbon tail of the fatty acid, and that kink is going to kind of disrupt um, a nice tight packing of uh, carboxylic acid head and hydrocarbon tails from neighboring molecules can't get as close together. So if they're further apart, it's not going to take as much energy. It's not going to take as high of a temperature to kind of break that up from a solid to a liquid, right? This is why we see oils at room temperature for the uh, unsaturated fatty acids and why we see fats at room temperature for saturated fatty acids. And I'm generalizing there, but that's what I mean by uh, these LDF intermolecular forces. LDF, not that it's important for, for us right now, it was earlier in the course, but it stands for London dispersion forces. All right, and then choice C is not monounsaturated, but when you have more than one double bond. Polyunsaturated fatty acids are called PUFAs, P-U-F-A, you've probably heard of that. They have two or more carbon-carbon double bonds in the hydrocarbon, uh, the one I'm drawing now. So oleic acid was 18 carbons, one double bond at C9. Linoleic is 18 carbons with two double bonds at C9 and C12. The next one I'm going to draw in the sequence, so you got ole you got stearic acid, no double bonds, 18 carbons. Oleic acid, one double bond, okay, at carbon 9. Then you have linoleic, which we just drew, 18 carbons with two double bonds, one at C9, one at C12. And now linolenic is as far as we'll go. This guy has three double bonds, all of them cis. Then they're at C9, C12. C15, so it's, it's like this, 9, 12, 15, okay? One double bond, nine. Uh, two double bonds, C9, C12. Three double bonds like linolenic, C9, C12, C15, all right? So this is how you can remember the ones that we need to know for our course. Oleic, linoleic, linolenic, with no double bonds being steric. And these are all on in table 15, one on page five, uh, 512. Okay, melting point of this guy is low, minus 17 degrees Celsius. It's got three kinks in a single chain. You can imagine neighboring linolenic acid molecules being far enough apart. We don't have to crank up the, the temperature too much to melt them. In fact, negative 17 Celsius. Just a note here, there are abbreviated ways to write structures for fatty acids. Steric acid is 18 carbons with no double bonds. I've mentioned that already. So it's CH3, quote, a whole bunch of CH2s, in fact, 16 of them, and then COOH. So I put a box around that particular one. Sometimes I like to draw out the carboxylic acid part, nonetheless, the, the functional group. So either or, I put a box around the most simplified condensed structure. Oleic acid was next in line, has one double bond, and that's at C9, as I said. So these are kind of hard to write from an abbreviation standpoint, especially when you're watching the way I do it, where I start my, I put my functional group on the right-hand side. It's like you're writing left to right, but then you're numbering from the right. So it's a little bit difficult. Feel free to start your carboxylic acid on the left, by the way, work your way left to right. Linoleic acid, this is 18 carbons, two double bonds at C9 and C12, like I've mentioned several times already tonight. Remember, linoleic is a shorter word than linolenic. Linoleic, two double bonds. Linolenic, longer word, more double bonds. Okay, that's kind of a trick to remember it. 
But linoleic acid, if I were to draw that condensed, I could draw the formation that you see there. This is also shown exactly like this in Table 15.1 on page 512. Linolenic acid, 18 carbons. Remember, it's a longer word. It's got more double bonds. C9, C12, C15. So you'll see here I'm drawing it from the left, so it makes it difficult to observe where my carbon, what my carbon uh, number assignments are until I'm finished. And then once you see that I've drawn my C double bond to OOH, my carboxyl group, then I can start my numbering and I can see that if I draw all this out, then yes, I do end up with the proper condensed structure. All right. Now, I have a question I want to ask here. It says, why does the saturated fatty acid, palmitic acid, have a higher melting point than the 12 carbon saturated fatty acid, lauric acid. So here they're both saturated fatty acids. If they're both saturated fatty acids, I can't use the kink argument at all. I should not mention the word kink. I should not talk about cis double bonds making the chain bend out. I shouldn't talk about any of that. How come lauric acid has a lower melting point? Well, lauric acid has less carbons. So the more carbons I have in this chain, the more that they are kind of aggregated or attracted together from an intermolecular or between molecule standpoint. The larger the molecule, everything else considered the same, the larger the molecule, the longer the hydrocarbon chain, the higher the melting point. Okay, that's why palmitic acid has a higher melting point than the smaller lauric acid. All right, and lastly, for video number one uh, from chapter 15, some key points about fatty acids. This video is going to give us everything we need to know about fatty acids, and then we're going to apply this fatty acid uh, information to video number two, which is coming up, that talks about waxes, um, primarily wax esters, and then triglycerides. All right, so some key points. Uh, number one, water solubility greatly increases by reaction with MeOH. We learned when studying carboxylic acids that carboxylic acids will react with MeOH and make the carboxylate salt. All right, and a salt or a carboxylate is always more water soluble than its corresponding carboxylic acid. Number two, a particular type of polyunsaturated acid, known as well, a, a particular type of polyunsaturated acids known as omega-3s. They have a very important impact on our health. You've probably seen a lot of these in Rite Aid. They sell them in bottles and bottle format, almost like vitamins. But omega-3, now omega-3 is a strange phrase. What does that mean? Well, this is actually weird because you number, if you number from the CH3 end, which is the end all the way on the other side from the, the carboxylic acid end, if you count one, two, three, omega is the third the third carbon right there. So if you have a double bond off of that quote, omega-3 carbon, then it's considered an omega-3 fatty acid. All right, and then number three, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAs, have key roles within biological cells. I'm just gonna bullet point them here for you. Um, polyunsaturated fatty acids are involved in the regulation of enzymes and enzyme formation. They're a structural component of cells and then there's many more also listed in chapter 15 of your textbook. All right. So that's it for video one, fatty acids. Next video is coming up right after this, which will round off and complete our chapter on lipids or fats. Okay.